Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, February 2nd, around 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. We're looking at Comet 96P Matchholz, and it has left the field of view of Lasco C3, and it is making its way away from Earth and the inner solar system. But the big story, as ice storm continues in the south, parts of the northeast brace for brutal wind chills not felt in decades. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, today is also Groundhog Day. The 2023 prediction is in, and Puxatawney Phil saw his shadow, which means, well, six more weeks of winter. The good news is that Puxatawney Phil is not that accurate, only 40% accurate over its lifetime and just one correct guess in the last six years. But it's looking like winter is going to continue for at least another month. With the Sierra snowpack at its largest, it has been in 28 years. It looks like another atmospheric river is coming to smash the West in just about two weeks, so buckle up. As main ski areas consider closing during the coldest weekend in decades. Let's take a look at the forecast. Southern icing event coming to an end as Arctic air across the north. As icing transitions into rain and then ends across the south into the mid-south, hazards will continue because thawing ice could still cause trees and tree limbs to break. A strong Arctic front will bring cold temperatures and dangerous wind chills to minus 50 or colder across the northern tier. And the tippy touch of Maine has blizzard warnings. So also heavy snow can be expected across the east central parts of Alaska. Let's take a look at what that ice storm has done here to the south. There's almost a half a million people, people without power in Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Texas. The hardest hit here with 350,000 out. Let's refresh this and see if there's any improvement. No, it's getting worse. Now 380,000 without power in Texas. So the situation continues to escalate. And we can see here that that storm is going to make its way out. Just a little tiny bit of icing still associated with that, and it's going to become all rain and push its way out by the beginning of the weekend, which is good news. Let's take a look at these snowfall totals. Look at this. Out to February 18th, we've got four, eight feet of snow possible because of these atmospheric rivers that are going to be coming. We have a little snow events happening now in the northern Sierras as well as Washington State and Oregon. That's going to last through Saturday and Sunday here, more snow moving down the Sierras. Monday, it'll move into the Four Corners region. Tuesday, there'll have the heavy snow in eastern Canada, some snow in the northeast as the system moves across Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus and the Midwest there. Iowa looks like it could be in the picture February 10th for some snow, as well as Wisconsin, Michigan, especially the northern tier. And late in the models, the west literally lights up here. Atmospheric rivers are coming again in the models. Let's take a look at what they look like here. Oh, we've only got eight hours up, so we're not going to see it there. So heads up, there is more snow on tap for an already record-breaking snow season in the West. And regardless of all the climate change gobbledygook, the latest global average tropospheric temperatures came out from Dr. Roy Spencer uh, in the last 24 hours. And take a look. As predicted, the January 2023 temperature of the global lower atmosphere on Earth has fallen below the 30-year average. Something is cooling the planet rapidly. Since 2020, the temperatures have plummeted 0.4 degrees C. Hunga Tonga may have a little bit to do with that, but the fact that we are entering the next grand solar minimum may have a little more to do with it. Seismic update. There are no quakes of note. We have moderate earthquake up here in Alaska at 5.0, 111 kilometers. Got some activity out here in the Caribbean. Actually, the Leeward Islands, far from the Caribbean. <laughs> This is in Guadalupe 5.0, and there are some volcanoes out there, so we'll keep a close eye, but all appears to be quiet across the globe. Worldwide Volcano News Update, same thing. The quiescence continues, no spectacular volcanic events. Just some interesting things to report on here. Santa Guito in Guatemala, a lava dome continues to evolve here. There is a glowing, lo glowing lava dome and shining hot rock falls that are being imaged in 3D from space. 
And also some satellite images here showing Lascar volcano in northern Chile with a new lava dome in the center, Domo. Now, space weather news update. The sun is quiet. We are supposed to be in solar max, and we are in the B range as far as X-rays are concerned. Now, the latest HMI intensity shows a blank disk except for tiny little pepper spots there, and we expect quiet conditions to continue for the next several days. KP2 could get down to KP0 here. We could become psychic, so heads up. There was a small CME that passed, a weak CME, Sparked auroras the other day. It hit Earth's magnetic field on February 1st at 1840 54 UTC, causing 10 nanotesla jolt in the magnetometer reading. And here we can see auroras sparked across the Arctic Circle. Absolutely beautiful. And then another peak here at 96P Comet. 96P Matchholz exiting Lasco C3 frame. Now let's talk about the solar cycle comparison because the latest data came in from the last month and you can see here that it is ever present that cycle 25 is looking like a match for 24. There was a massive spike this month, but impulsive spikes in activity do not translate into the smoothed curve here. So the spike that occurred this month is still lower than any spike that occurred in cycle 24. So we're still lower than the threshold of cycle 24 for 25. And this impulsive spike is rapidly going to come straight down here. And we're going to have smoothing and the first spike of a probably two spike cycle. Or it could be a single spike and drop off and become a dud. So either one is the case. But cycle 25 right here is the third weakest cycle in 200 years still. So those are the facts. Now, more interesting science coming up here. A mastodon speared by a bone. A bone spear point shows humans were hunting megafauna in North America 13,900 years ago. Yeah, right before the extinction event, right before the Younger Dryas event, and that's right where this baby got stabbed, right in the spine. And there you can see the bone projectile point inside here, an MRI image making it very clear. Now this is interesting because this is the earliest example of a bone projectile using to kill a mastodon in North America. All links will be below. More fascinating news coming out from Mauritania, which has been the source of much speculation over the eye of the Sahara or the Rishat, Rikat structure and it being Atlantis, but the fact that there is no geologic evidence that the continent of Africa has been under the ocean anytime soon, except for maybe some tsunami washovers, makes the whole idea kind of, well, not too viable. But what in fact was happening in the northern portions of Africa thousands of years ago was rain, tons of it, and tons of big river systems and lakes. And new radar images from the Mauritanian desert have revealed a river stretching for more than 500 kilometers and suggest plants and wildlife thrived there thousands of years ago. This is during the African humid period, which ended around 5,000 years ago. Now, recent deep sea expeditions in the Indian Ocean are, well, not only revealing because they reveal a plethora of new species, but hilarious at the same time. Here is some dialogue between the scientists and Yi Kai T says, you know, one of my colleagues, sorry about that interruption. Let's get back to the hilarious dialogue. Yi Kai T says, you know, one of my colleagues actually lectured us on the etymology behind ass fish. Yes, I for the life of me cannot remember because I was too busy laughing. And that's a boom. In more fantastical research from NOAA, there is a new simulation coming out on the tsunami that was generated during the Chicxa Club impact. The one that killed off the dinosaur 64 million years ago. And here is that simulation. And you can find interesting tidbits like this on our Twitter feed. Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave, where you can find this interesting simulation from NOAA 
on the tsunami caused by the asteroid that hit Earth 66 million years ago, according to this tweet. The asteroid was estimated to have been six plus miles in diameter, which is why the waves could be detected around the globe. That is just mind boggling. And again, all this can be found at our Twitter page, Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave. So check it out. Now, genetic engineering has been in the news and we've been reporting on it. One of the main companies driving it is Colossal. And that is the group that is going to reanimate the woolly mammoth in just a few years. They made another announcement that they are going to de-extinct the dodo bird. And I think this is all pretty fascinating science, but we really need to understand the effects on the biome if these things start to be released into nature or escape, perhaps. They may cause more havoc than good. It's all the name of the dollar, though. Now, complete lack of sunlight killed a Renaissance-era toddler, according to CT scans. CT scans of the child's mummy show that the toddler, a descendant of an Australian count, died from vitamin D deficiency due to lack of sunlight. And there are some other groundbreaking things coming out on the vitamin D deficiency. In fact, a new paper coming out on the protective effects of vitamin D against the hoo flu. This is something that was suppressed and we were victimized and demonetized by suggesting that that may have been a contributing factor. And in fact, vitamin D supplementation is the best prophylactic against the current thing. And that is proven by science. So take a vitamin D supplement. They're cheap. And go out and get some sun. Now, the top 10 incredible facts about the Little Ice Age. We're just going to breeze through this because it would take a while to get specific. But all the links will be below so you can peruse it at your own time. And there are even some videos you can watch on the bullet list. The Little Ice Age wasn't little at all. In fact, it lasted for 500 years between 1300 and 1850. And during this time, there were two especially cold periods, each grand minimas on their own, the Maunder and the Dalton. In fact, it was so cold that the Baltic Sea froze over entirely. Number nine, no one can agree on how or why it began. But our channel believes it's the sun. And we are entering the next solar shutdown and the next grand minima. Number eight, expanding glaciers literally crushed entire towns. As the climate cooled, one of the most significant effects during this time was the advancement of glaciers, and rapidly. There is evidence that in the Alps and Scandinavia, advancing glaciers caused by the Little Ice Age actually destroyed entire towns, engulfing them in feet of ice. Number seven, summers were not so summery. Yes, in fact, this led to crop loss and famine in many regions. Number six, it caused mass starvation because of those not so summery summers. Indeed, a particularly dreadful period of the Little Ice Age was the Great Famine of 1315 to 1322, where torrential periods of rain waterlogged agricultural areas and made planting crops literally impossible. Number five, people blamed witches and others for their troubles. Other scapegoats of the time included the Jewish population and other marginalized groups who were also the victims of much discrimination and acts of cruelty. Number four, it had a role in some of the biggest events in European history, including, but not limited to, the Black Death. In 1588, the Spanish Armada was almost entirely wiped out by an Arctic hurricane. Number three, it was so cold that frost fairs were held on the River Thames. And there is lots of historical information uh, in paintings from this time. Number two, it sparked a wave of new fashion trends because it was cold out. So... With the extreme changes in weather, people were forced to adapt their clothing. The 16th century saw the growth in the popularity of floor-length coats 
and people tended to wear far more undergarments than before. So thank you, Grand Solar Minimum, for my long underwear. And number one, it may have caused the Enlightenment. There are theories that the Little Ice Age had such a significant impact on European society that it actually caused economic, social, and intellectual changes that resulted in the period we know as the Enlightenment. Many people think, including myself, that the increased cosmic rays had something to do with it. And one more interesting note, chicken egg yolk antibodies block the binding of multiple woo spike proteins. And that's a boom. Proper prior planning prevent piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. And hit that thumbs up. We love you. And that's a boom.